Welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio, where we challenge the fitness between your ears. I'm your host, Tiaja. You know, one of the often overlooked facets of any crisis is what it reveals. What we are learning about the average everyday American is that many of our neighbors are living with pre-existing conditions than what was previously thought, indeed ignored by them, as well as the medical establishment. For decades, we have winked at the rising incidence of pre-diabetes and other immune-compromising ailments because they were otherwise invisible or silent killers which received little or no media attention though they kill tens of thousands of our neighbors, co-workers, friends, and family members every year. We didn't even seem to mind the increasingly ominous corporate footprint of yet another dialysis center springing up in our small towns, rural areas, and metropolitan cities. We took it all in stride until COVID-19 reminded us that multiplying the number of dialysis centers is not the answer nor a sustainable solution to the rise in diabetes. Until COVID-19, most never considered the physical toll over-prescribed medications like antibiotics, sleeping aids, painkillers, stress reducers were having on our collective health as a nation. That the aforementioned are in fact precursors for existing conditions, which meant that despite early prognostications, COVID-19 was and is not an age-specific virus. In fact, no disease or virus is, despite what the fuzzy science will tell us. The answer and solution to combating any disease or contagion is and will always be a healthier, stronger immune system. Now, does that mean having a quote-unquote strong immune system makes you impervious to illness? Of course not. But it does portend that your chances of surviving any disease or contagion will increase exponentially. Face it, we have a population that is significantly younger chronologically than they are biologically, which is to say, Americans are sicker than they are old. Did you know that the average person over 60 is taking 12 prescriptions? Let that sink in. Sure, we have an aging population, the baby boomers notwithstanding, but age is not the issue. Health is. For this reason, COVID-19 may indeed go down in history as one of the deadliest viruses that saved lives. Now, before you change the channel or dismiss me as some out-of-touch heretic, hear me out. As I mentioned in last week's show, I never witnessed as many families out walking together. I have never heard as much laughter and optimism. Now, sure, if you turn on the news, 99.9% is all bad, all the time. But how else do you expect them to increase their viewership or subscribers? If their journalists would just venture outdoors and not just report from one narrow point of view, they too would see what I see. Because as John Lennon so famously exclaimed in his song Imagine, I'm not the only one. Many people are realizing the same thing I am. That is, they too are witnessing the indomitability of the human spirit, the childlike enthusiasm for life again that is so pervasive now, particularly in the so-called elderly. And before you offer a cynical retort about how they have nothing to lose because of their advanced age, let me remind you that I'm sure their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren would disagree. The other day I decided to go on a drive and what I observed both stunned me and warmed my heart. I saw almost exclusively nothing but 60, 70, and 80 somethings walking arm in arm, walking with grandchildren, jogging, hills and trails, riding bikes, rollerblading, and yes, even grinding on skateboards. What I realized is that it wasn't about what they had to lose but what they sought to gain. They were determined to live life on their terms. They weren't being socially irresponsible by putting others in danger. Instead, they were likely practicing what they have always practiced and preached. After all, they had seen the world at war before, but not with a virus, but with another more lethal contagion known as hatred. They had lived through at least one world war, the assassination of an American president, as well as the most world-renowned civil rights leader of our time. They have lived through the Korean War and Vietnam and Pearl Harbor and 9-11, and most will survive COVID-19 as well. Social distancing was not some self-imposed edict, but rather a federal mandate back then, enacted as the law of Jim Crow in their day. They grew up in a world where there was no Netflix or Amazon, indeed a world without antibiotics, radio, television, cell phones, or the internet. The world was a much scarier place for them as children. Many survived the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918, which according to some records killed over 200 million people worldwide. They survived even though the average life expectancy during that time had precipitously dropped to 36.6 years for men and 42.2 years for women. But here they were in all their elderly glory. They were dancing and they were moving and they were enjoying life like teenagers in love. And it was obvious to see their love for life and each other. The fact that they wore their gratitude like oversized clothes. They were consumers of a different kind. They had found the silver lining. As one woman exclaimed, 
She had found Christ in all the crisis. Her statement seemed trite, but it was an answer to an ethereal question I remember that the rap group Public Enemy had posed in one of their songs decades ago, where is Christ in all this crisis? Now many may be asking this question today, but not these souls. They were too busy celebrating life, too preoccupied with being the change they sought. They weren't about to stay quarantined, locked up indoors when the sun, birds, trees, and oceans beckoned them to come out and play like it did when they were little children. In many respects, it was a much scarier and dangerous world than we now live. Before COVID-19, we have forgotten how much harder some have had it. And in our collective amnesia, we have forgotten how precious life is. Apparently, they hadn't. Dear friends, I wish above all things that you prosper just as your soul prospers. You've been listening to Urban X Real Health Fitness Radio with your host Tiaja. Until next week, as always, walk in health and peace.